I was told that with age modelers tend to move to larger scales once the small models become too fiddly. I started in TT or 3mm scale, then I moved up to scale 1 and now I'm looking into 7.25 inch gauge. If this goes on like this, I should have my own standard gauge railway by the time I retire. I was an active member of the Harrow and Wembley Society of Model Engineers when I was living in London. Therefore I had a taste of 7.25 inch gauge in the past. I was thinking about building my own ride on trains a few years now. The first plans were about a boogie engine, but I quickly realized that I need to start small and simple, as there is a lot to learn on the first model. Still, how hard can it be, right? I had the following constraints and design basics in mind. Model something that appears narrow gauge, so I have plenty of room in the loco and the carriages would be wide enough to com comfortably sit in. Do not model an actual engine or a line but give it a more you know give it more freedom in the design. Should be able to negotiate tight curves. Um, also keep it low cost and use as much commercially available products as possible. And I'm comfortable with working wood, but I have no uh, experience handling steel, so I would definitely need some help. But whatever I can do from wood, I would just use wood. My main concern was how to design the drive mechanism. So I started to look at UK vendors to see how it is done and also get some ideas and uh, about size and uh, of a two axle engine. So there is actually a lot of resource online. Furnix locomotives uh, have made models that I like. Uh, the Furnix Locos Comet appears uh, good in size and it's a good looking generic engine too. So I also like the Furnix Loco Scooter um, as he showed me more pictures on um, more pictures to understand how to put together the the, the drive train and the uh, and the drive mechanism, I knew I need to include sprung axles to ensure that the engine runs safely on an even track. I even emailed Phoenix Locomotives to ask ask some advice, and I was given a picture in a reply email which helped me a lot to understand what I need. My other source of inspiration was Ride on Railways, which is limited in 7 or quarter inch gauge, but the details on their Captain Harley provide a lot of details on bogey design, power rating, and some other consideration. The Jupiter 2 from Abbott's model engineer is another small engine to consider as a source for design basics. Sourcing traction motor was probably the easiest. There are plenty available on eBay or from the usual Chinese sources which are originally designed for electric scooters. I ended up buying a ZY1016 model which is a 24 volt um, uh, uh, brush motor with an output of 250 watts. Uh, the uh, rated current is 13.5 amps and the rated speed is 2750 rpm. This motor exists in multiple names and multiple ratings. Um, I got four of them because originally I planned to um, design a, a boogie engine. And it appears that that particular model is no longer available. There is a 200 and a 280 watt model uh, and from different sellers, uh, which you can see on the screen now. It doesn't have a mounting hose on the fa face plate but it has a stand which is welded onto the, um, to the outer casing. It was, I was originally thinking about a direct drive, like the, the wheel sets that you can uh, get from MaxiTrack, but I decided to make it easier and then just use chain drive. The motor comes with a number 2511 thief sprocket, but I was not able to get other sprockets uh, for the exact same chain type. So eventually, um, I changed the sprockets to and and the and the change to um, three eight inch change type, and also got a eleven um, teeth sprocket and a forty teeth sprocket. I found the size somewhere uh, stating that I should aim for a one to five reduction, uh, but I couldn't get a high enough teeth sprocket that would fit behind the wheel. So I ended up going for an 11 and a 40, so I would have about you know, one fourth reduction. For the wheels I started looking at commercial products. There are a lot of rollers available, but the, the range of steel rollers and flange rollers are much less common. 
I found some uh, from a company called B.S. Rollen, uh, a German company. They have cast iron wiggles with deep flanges, um, which you can see on the screen now. But the, um, the, the depth of the flange and also the width of the flange and also the width of the running service is about twice as recommended in the uh, seven or quarter inch uh, society standards. Um, so I ask around how much it would be to turn my own wheels, and it appears that in a reasonable you know quantity, which is like you know twenty wheels, um, I can get about the same price as the as the commercially available products, and um, um, at least I would have something which is more true to the society standards, and probably it would be you know easier to use in curves and uh, I don't know points. So. Um, I was able to source 160 millimeter um, diameter blanks and started designing my own wheels, which was basically just putting the society standards into uh, a drawing, um, so I can give it to um, like a you know machine company. Uh, because I had 160 diameter blanks, I designed the wheels to be about 156 millimeters in diameter at the top of the flange. And all other dimension, as I said, is coming from the standard. Once I had these, I started with some rough sketches. I've gone back to Phoenix Locomotives um, to get some rough dimensions. I decided the local would be 840 millimeters long, 450 millimeters wide, and the wheelbase will be about 530 millimeters. As common with Continental switchers, I wanted to design a mid cab engine like the the Henschel DH360, which I have a model of in gauge one. I did not want the cap to be perfectly in the middle and also wanted the, the top of the chassis to be horizontal. The first catch was just to ensure that it is not too high or not too low. Um, next I started adding some details with a slope engine roof and that I changed to like a horizontal top. And I started um, to add some additional details the chassis is also kept quite simple. Basically, each side will be 8mm MDF with some details like doors and handles milled um, into the MDF. There are some see-through grills on the front and the fan grill on the top and the rest will be fixed decoration. Of course, uh, three working headlights and two red tailing uh, lights just to add some you know, something to play with. I'm planning to uh, glaze the windows with some acrylic and add some black window frames, which are not really shown in the, uh, uh, in the model. Not all these details are completed as I'm planning to redo, redo all the drawings in AutoCAD. I prefer doing modeling, 3D modeling in SketchUp and 2D final design in AutoCAD, just because I've never learned 3D design in AutoCAD. I've also created separate drawings uh, showing the frame with the axle and the suspension and another one with the, with the foot plate on. A few more words about the design. I started the design from the, top, uh, from the bottom up. The, uh, the wheel back-to-back -back dimension was given by the 7 and quarter society standards. This determined um, where the bearing housing will be, which again set the placement for the two main beams. I designed the buffer beams to be 10 mm shorter than on each side than the foot plate, uh, so I can hide it with some you know, additional details. The motors are secured to three cross beams in the middle, um, giving the most play to the chain drive as the axles was obviously wouldn't move up and down. I worked it out that the two motors fit um, side by side, sharing one cross, cross beam in the middle. The coupling is designed based on what is most commonly used on ride on railways. The coupling is designed based on what is most commonly used on ride on railways. The coupling itself is a metal bar with two holes at either end and um, it is held with pins uh, through the holes. There is a spring on the inner side of the buffer beam for dampening the ride when the engine pulls away. There are a few more parts that I got um, in the last couple of months. For a speed control I was thinking about getting an electric scooter drive unit but I, did, I decided to go for an even cheaper option which is a general purpose PWM driver from Lead Extreme. It is rated for 30 amps up to 50 volts 
which should be enough for the two motors running at the same time. I tested it with a 12 volt power supply, so it is only running half speed without any load, but it looks, uh, for, uh, looks okay so far. I have no plans to add brakes yet. Um, I know that this is something I need to address later. But this controller is about £150 cheaper than any commercially available product on the market, which obviously comes with a, uh, with a braking function. I got some more stuff from the Elixtreme. 12 volt, 5 watt white LED bumps for headlights and some red LEDs for the tail lights. Also got two different lead acid batteries uh, charge indicators, but I'm not sure which uh, one I'm going to use and how. The first is a traditional square black plastic enclosure with a level, showing both battery voltage and the level symbol, which would be easy to mount. And the other one is a black lit LCD screen with again with a level symbol and a percentage indicator. For this um, sec later one, this spec claims that it can also measure 24, 24 volt batteries, which would be ideal when, if the two batteries are connected in series. My other preferred site is this IC station where I found connectors with uh, screw up plugs, which would be ideal for connecting the controller or the charger. The one has 12 pins, which I could use for the controller, and the other one has 4 pins, which would be ideal for a charging socket. Both have decent amp ratings. This is where I am right now. So far so good, but I know there is so much ahead. Stay tuned for the next episode, when I hopefully will show something material as well. That is all for now. Thanks for watching.